Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 79 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do the best I can to answer them. Let's get right to it. The first one is called Survival Guide in Audio Format. Hello, Mark. Do you happen to have your survival guide in an audio format? If so, would mind sending to me? If not, I think that would be something awesome since you are a great commentator. Thank you, Benjamin. And yes, actually, it is an audio format. Uh, what I did was I made it one of my early Strange World episodes. So if you go to my Strange World playlist and go all the way back to the single digits, you will find the Flat Earth, or I'm sorry, just the survival guide in general. But it, I think it also works on some sort of Flat Earth apocalypse. Anyway, moving on. This one's called Moon Distance. Hi, Mark. Although I support the flat earth possibility, here is a question one day will come up for debate. If the moon is hovering above the plane, then two exact opposite points in the plane can, when the moon is at enough height from what we see as horizon, can see the moon at the same time being daytime in one and end time and nighttime in the other. At one point, you will see the moon with a different angle in the other, but simultaneously, maybe in one point above you, say 90 degrees on the other side of the plane, you will see the moon far away just to make a point, say 35 or 45 degrees. We need to figure out from all the proposed flat earth model orbits of the moon in what which one we can have the most distance between the two plane points which have the straight line visibility of the moon, then place two people that can communicate with each other to compare the information. If that is a fact, and we all assume the distance of the moon, whatever the moon is, a lot smaller than 237,000 miles and more the neighborhood of a few thousand miles, it is, and its size is different, <clears throat> excuse me, than we know it to be, and assuring the diameter of the Earth is approximately 8,000 miles, and the moon should appear to be a lot closer to any of the two points at any given time. Therefore, we should be able to, to take simultaneous pictures with regular identical equipment at the same time and compare the size of the moon in the pictures. Having said that, the pictures themselves should show noticeable enough size difference to the naked eye, and if... Even the moon appears 5 or 10% larger and will be enough to determine some real measurements of size and distance. Okay, if you understood what I'm trying to say and you think I have a point, please let me know. I'm just trying to be useful. Best wishes. Shh. <laughs> and his name is Show Me Proof. Um, <clears throat> well, you're assuming that, that there's only one moon and it's not part of multiple projections. Because remember, in the simulations that we make now, in the real world, you know, when we, we make simulations, we uh, instance everything, which means the moon that you're seeing on one side of the continent may not be the same moon. They look identical, but they are instanced by geographical region or they are instanced per individual in some cases. So you're making an assumption there that there is exactly one moon and how it is displayed up there, be it two-dimensional or three-dimensional, is consistent for the entire landmass area. And you can't assume that, not not with what we're doing now. So I like what you're thinking. I, I, I love the, the, the layout of how you would run a test there, but you're making a massive assumption beforehand, which you, you just can't at this point. We, we just don't know enough. But thank you for that. This one's called Survival Guide. Straight up, please send survival guide. Thank you, Josh. And if anyone wants their survival guide, that's all you have to do. It's just put it in an email. I'll send it to you. It's free. It's in a PDF format. It's about 100 pages long. Please do print it out if you get a chance. This one's called, So Apparently Spacesuits Are Better Than Bulletproof. Mark, uh, the improved EVA suit micrometeor, the improved EVA suit micrometeoroids and orbital debris MMOD protection using STF armor and self-healing polymers, UD spacesuit layup investigation uses self-repairing composite materials that can resist damage and fix tears, fix tears from micrometeors while in the harsh environment of space. Uh-huh. Uh, let me see here. There's there's all sorts of links to this. One's at nasa.gov research experiments. Micrometeoroids 
pose a significant threat to space exploration. The average velocity of a micrometeoroid relative to a spacecraft in orbit is 10 kilometers per second or 22,000 miles an hour. Just so you know how fast it is. That's, that's 10 times faster than, than most bullets that are out there. Resistance to micrometeoroid impact is significant design challenge, really, for spacecraft and spacesuit designers see thermal micrometeoroid garment. While the tiny sizes of most micrometeoroid limits the damage incurred, the high velocity impacts will constantly degrade the outer casing of spacecraft in a manner analogous to sandblasting. Wow. Long-term exposure can threaten the functionality of spacecraft systems. Long-term exposure? Uh, well, let's see here. And then he said the, the 220 Swift bullet is currently the fastest bullet, able to reach a velocity of 3,800 feet per second. First introduced in 1935, the 220 Swift was the first factory loaded rifle cartridge that could reach 4,000 feet per second using a 60 grain bullet. However, blah, 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 how it drops down range. Um, that being said, NASA's own website, and I'll end it with this, states that EVA exposes astronauts to potential MMOD impacts, we'll just call them MMOD, uh, micrometeor, uh, ranging from uh, less than one kilo kilometers per second to 15 kilometers per second from secondary lunar ejecta and from orbital debris and MMODs at up to 70 kilometers a second. Puncture damage to spacesuits may also arise from other physical hazards, such as tools, sharp edges on handrails, or surface elements. So they're claiming that their improved MMOD spacesuit is able to not only stop an MMOD traveling at up to 156,000 miles an hour, but also the self-healing polymers will seal off any damage done to the suit. If this is the case, why isn't our military using this impenetrable protection out in the battlefield? Absolutely right. We're talking about the ultimate bulletproof vest. Uh, if NASA has the technology that can stop an MMOD that travels faster than the fastest rifle bullet, this could definitely save a lot of lives. I'll tell you why. These spacesuits can't even operate in a vacuum, let alone take a round from a rifle. If you think I'm not... Yeah, that's the other thing. Uh, you, Remember, these suits would, would blow up to a really, really tight, tight balloon, which is extremely weak to punctures. You know, like anything, it's it's like a balloon, you know, a, a, a balloon that's only half blown up. You, you, it's tough to, to poke with a knife. But if the balloon is tight, you can pop it with a pin just just like that. Um, anyway, it seems like a pretty easy experiment. Have the astronaut, it's the experiment this guy wants to do. Have an astronaut wearing a spacesuit enter into a vacuum chamber, prove that it really works, and then uh, fire a rifle at it. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you don't even need the astronaut in the suit at that point. Just because they'd be, oh, I'm not going to have a rifle fired at me. No, you seriously, put a, put any rifle. In fact, it doesn't even have to be the fastest rifle. Heck, a shotgun could go through that thing. Neither test will end well, but I'd sure love to see someone prove me wrong. Thanks, Jason. Uh, you're very welcome, Jason. Thank you for putting out that test and all the great information on that. You guys can look this up if you get a chance. Uh, NASA.gov slash mission pages slash station slash research experiments. You can look look up what they're, what they're saying their spacesuits can do. They're, they're the greatest things ever. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one's called AE Maps. Hey, Mark, I'm a commercial pilot for United. Want to let you know that I've been on board for a year now. I've watched all your videos and wanted to lend a hand from the flying community. I have access to everything flying related, such as charts and routes. I was also a military pilot who's been in Antarctica over 10 times. Would love to chat more, but I have to fly again today. Thanks for your response, Brian. Uh, yeah, Brian, get a hold of me again. Hopefully, love to love to talk to you. Hopefully, you're listening, and I will shoot him a thing as well. This one's called Rob Skiba confirmed. Wow, well, Rob Skiba confirmed. Oh yeah, wow, this is a while ago. <laughs> Sorry, this was from Rob going to the meetup down in Los Angeles that we were all at, and we had a great time. This one's called Downsizing. Mark just watched Downsizing the movie. Domes, giants, Nobel Prizes, sciences, eco-disasters, voting, taxes. I might have missed something, but it's a flat earth movie in my book. And that's from Rob. And you're absolutely right. It is not. I, I, they treat it like a comedy, but it's more of a think piece. And it did not get reviewed well because it had a whole bunch of mixed messages in it. And it started out really sad. So anyway, 
Uh, this one's called Quick Question. Hi, Mark. I'm curious as to how much time you spend producing each episode. Thanks, Thunder Bear. And really depends on what we're talking about. So like this video right here, I have to record for an hour, read, read uh, emails, and then it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to put it into a template and assign videos. Uh, sometimes I do slides, sometimes I do videos, but I've got all the templates built. And then I make sure the intro's there and the captions are, are looking good. I have to do my own editing and then I render it. And now I'm rendering it on a, on a much faster machine than I used to. Although my old machine wasn't bad. This one's even, even quicker. And then it takes me a little while to upload it and then release it. Just, you know, kind of make sure everything's looking good. So I don't know if beginning to end, like this one right here after I'm done, maybe a couple hours. And then Strange World, they all take really, uh, except for the narration part, pretty much the same amount of time. I mean, Strange World takes two hours to record. This takes an hour to record. But as far as building it into a video, they all take about the same amount of time because the templates are already there. So thank you for the question. I don't think anyone's ever really asked me that. This one's called T-shirt size. Mark, could you change my T-shirt size from a large to XL for this year's annual convention? I have put some weight on. That's from Jeff in Colorado Springs. Uh, sure. <laughs> I I've, oh, that's right, because I'm gonna bring I, I every once in a while. But I'll 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 have XLs at the uh, at the conference. So, but are you asking me? Oh, wait, are you because you bought your tickets? No, you don't, you don't want to contact me for the the annual convention if we're talking about the official colorado springs wait the official denver conference in 2018 contact uh, go to fe2018.com and uh reach out to those people they'll, they'll take care of you as far as t-shirt size so hopefully hopefully you'll get this before then in fact maybe i you know what i'm gonna put this in my to-do pile because <laughs> i did not write him back and we'll take care of that <laughs> This one's called Heads Up Bashar. We'll talk about Flat Earth. Mark and Jaren. It was sent to Jaren as well. Many people have been following Bashar, channeled through Daryl Annika for years, and now he announces he will speak about Flat Earth on June 15th. Shows you how old my emails are. And the link there should be interesting. That's from John. Yep, and I did watch that. Very interesting. Not sure if I believe all channelers. Hopes. This one's called Hope This Helps. And it's a link to a video that's called, link is called, The Earth Does Not Spin Proof Flat Earth. And oh, it's from Mike Helmick and published on May 1st, 2018. So thank you for that. It was not, that was sent to me by Dave Holmes. This one's called Critical Mass. They are coming out of the closet. Mark, I routinely hear car horns acknowledging the Polar AE sticker on the back window of my SUV. But today a young man was screaming at me from across a parking lot in front of a liquor store. I was thinking, WTF, does this, what does, <laughs> WTF does this little Gumby want? So I flipped a U-turn and headed over towards him. Before I got to him, he got into an over-animated crouching pose and gave me the horizontal arm gesture. I was so friggin' happy to see his enthusiasm, I bought him a quart of his favorite malt liquor. <laughs> and referred him to your clues, which he hadn't heard of. Honestly, Mark, I love interacting with other flat earthers. It's a cool bond that brings out the best in me and inspires me to do something for them that makes their day a little better. When this thing goes viral, I have no doubt that the flat earth will become a beautiful place almost overnight. Thank you again for being accessible and eager to respond to my questions back in 2015. It expedited my path to the truth and made my life better. Sincerely, Lane M. Granite Bay, California. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Find a new flat earther, buy him a drink, buy him a cup of coffee, buy him, doesn't have to be alcohol, buy him, buy him a latte, <laughs> malt liquor. <laughs> That's awesome. The fact that he was standing in front of a liquor store kind of worries me. Okay. Uh, this one's called regarding, uh, uh, oh no, that was from the meetup. Sorry. I'm, I'm still dealing with a lot of uh, random emails from that meetup in Los Angeles. This one's called no subject. Hi, Mark. I write this because, C-U-Z, I don't know what else to do. If I start gabbing about flat earth to anyone randomly, it causes, well, stress. I don't have any data available. I haven't done any research. It just feels right. It feels flat. 
we can come up with all kinds of stuff as evidence, but they will still have this gravity thing for rebuttal. That's their stone wall. I guess we just chip away. I've always believed in mainstream stuff, but I've also lived thinking about out, thinking out of the box. Maybe I should be thankful for having that attitude. The main thing about all this, I friggin' like it. I should have paid more attention in science class because I seem to be learning more now than ever. Isn't that the truth? It's an interesting conundrum. We know the truth, but we're reluctant to say, knowing that by not saying, we are not changing anything. So, should we start saying stuff? To hell with the flat club rule? That's from John P. in Ontario, Canada. And yeah, yeah, start saying stuff. But but seriously, just size up the people. If they look like a grumpy person that, that just wants to punch somebody in the face, you know what? Come at them sideways and, and find out how their day is going before you drop this on them. Uh, let's see, this one's called NASA Reveals Logo for the 50th Anniversary of Apollo Missions. Uh, that's from collectspace.com. Uh, let me see the logo. Yeah, nothing special there. Apollo, the next giant leap. So the first O has a moon in it, and the second one has Mars in it. Yeah, that'll be the day. That's never, ever, ever going to happen. Uh, even e you can't even fake Mars because you can't come up with a scientific explanation of how you could get there. You can't even make up a science fiction concept. You, you cannot do it with conventional technology. Even if you could get there, you have no way of, I mean, even if Mars was there, even if Mars was something you could land on, you cannot fake the technology to get there. It's not like it was with the moon. The, the moon was relatively easy to fake by comparison. Mars is way, way, way more challenging. The distance is more challenging. The, the, the climate is more challenging. And more importantly, there's no return trip, even if you could land on it. So good luck. You're just going to kick that can down the road. And um, it was at Hibbler Productions did a fantastic video on it where they were showing every president from Clinton till now have been talking about the Mars mission. They've just been kicking this can down the road for decades. Hey, listening to Bill Clinton saying that the first Mars mission stuff was going to start up in 1996 was was very, <clears throat> very sobering. I watched that and it's like, oh yeah, now it makes sense because people forget. We change presidents, the message stays the same. This one's called Survival Guide and Coast to Coast Interview. Hi, Mark. I just wanted your Survival Guide and Coast to Coast Interview. Love your work. Flatlikeme.com. That's from Aaron. And I sent that to him. Anyone wants the coast to coast interview? It's the, one of the only interviews I cannot put up on YouTube. They made me sign a waiver, uh, which states that I cannot reproduce it. So I have it. I have just the raw files on my machine. If somebody wants it, I'll I'll shoot it to you through WeTransfer. <clears throat> This one's called Funding a Project Operation. Mark, I came into the Flat Earth in July or August of last year, 2017. I was already in steamy infighting, so I became more interested in what the issues were about that then focusing on Flat Earth. But after some research, this is what I think for a good Flat Earth project slash op. The most simple and basic way to discover the shape of the Earth is not to ask to fund a trip to the South Pole, but let's keep it real simple. You need funding to do this instead. Start with what we can already scientifically confirm, the North Pole. Locate the exact center point on Earth that is the absolute North Pole. Fly two planes equipped with radar in outward directions, all due exact south. Three, ensure all planes are flying perfect south at the exact same rate of speed and altitude. Maintain contact between the planes to determine how far each plane is from each other. If all the planes end up at the same spot, we must consider they flew around the Earth and that the Earth is some kind of shape, either a pear, donut, globular, or the like. However, if the planes came to an end point and they can't fly any further south and they all are at different points of the Earth, then it is flat or some kind of planar surface. I posted a video called Flat Earth Funding Project Operation Real Science. Also, I think the dome is a bit uh, like to an onion shaped cupola alike to those domes on orthodox churches the sun if inside or on outer layer above the dome moves in a spiral motion up in winter or down in summer during its orbit around the shape would cause the seasons and the warmer temperatures at the north pole and much colder temperatures at the south pole the video is short and still uploading so i'll wait and paste a link 
thanks. And that's from Lynn. Yes, Lynn, love love what you're thinking here. Again, I love people that, that try to think outside the box. And in this case, you miss something, which was, again, you're making an assumption here that because you're saying all the planes, like for example, know where they are in relation to each other. You're asking all these planes to do this test and still rely on the GPS system. Not to quote the matrix too much, but the GPS system works for them. It is a military DOD system designed in the 90s and will tell you not just where you think you are, but where they want you to think you are. And they will know about this test far in advance and those planes, the coordinates will be altered. Trust me on this. So. Moving on, this one's called Giz. <laughs> oh wait, that's my that's my hat order. Delete that. All right, this one's called Guest You Will Want to Have on a a a ASAP. Hi, Mark. You probably recognize my name. Yeah, you know I do. I've written you many times, sending you goodies, emailed goodies, not edible goodies. One of my good friends is a Hollywood actor who would be interested in being on Strange World to promote his new movie. You know how that goes. Why might that appeal to you? Well, his father directed the movie that changed my life and yours, JFK. Yes, the actor I'm speaking of is Sean Stone, Oliver Stone's firstborn, who we actually put in the movie playing Jasper. Sean has just made a martial arts brawler comedy set in the 80s called The Fury of the Fist and the Golden Fleece. You can watch it the same way you watch every new release. Okay. Uh, why would this make an interesting interview? Uh, as my friend, I've mentioned Flat Earth to him on many occasions, planted many seeds so that marble has been rattling around in his paint can for years now. He refers to himself as a conspiracy realist. He has, after all, grown up the son of Oliver Stone. Part of this also comes from his love of history. He graduated from Princeton as a history major and did editing on his father's Untold History of the United States. You know what? I, I actually I have that series, The um, the Untold History of the United States. It's, it's excellent. His thesis uh, at Princeton was The New World Order, which not long ago was published in book form. What's more, a major plot point of the film is GMO, sp specifically the injection of estrogen into meat for the purpose of emasculating men. There is also at least one reference to Kubrick in this movie with a pr primary antagonist, Lair having a Doctor Strange love motif. Let me know how you feel about this opportunity. You know what? I didn't even read this email till just now because I get so many emails, and I will contact him and see if I can get him uh, as a guest on the show. Sorry, it has taken so long. Uh, this one's called "Proving the Firmament and Flat Earth." Hi, Mark. Thanks for your dedication to the truth. Uh, a couple of ideas to show that the sun is circling above a flat earth came to my mind. One would be using drones at high altitude to follow the sun as it circles the earth. And another would be to use a fleet of drones to fly deep into Antarctica. Obviously, cameras would need to be mounted and they would need to be solar powered. But since regular citizens are not allowed inside Antarctica, why couldn't flat earthers get together and fly drones in and find out what's really there? Because uh, drones were banned a few years ago. Uh, that's just some ideas best. Amy. Yeah, I, I, it was a thing sent to me recently. Well, it's not real recently, but as I was in Flat Earth, almost immediately they put a thing out that's saying that uh, on the drones, you need a permit to fly drones. You can't just go down there and fly drones. They, they don't like them. And of course, they're going to cite environmental reasons. But we all know it's for something else so a nice idea but the, they've already they already thought about the drones way before you but hey don't stop thinking and that's a message to everybody everybody just keep coming up with ideas we will find a way through the defenses eventually this one's called 49th parallel <laughs> howdy mark is the 49th parallel between the united states and the canada straight on the a map or curved thanks pete i don't know I will have I should look at that the 49 I would imagine it's curved because the latitude and longitude lines are still bent somewhat so I, I would think it's it's curved but it's not going to be as exaggerated as it would be on a globe just my that's my first impression this one is called Vanity ham radio call sign. Mark, just a couple of quick notes. Do you by chance catch this news story of the astronauts, astronauts bringing 
a football back to earth just in time for the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, I know. They, they're doing it with all that stuff. They don't they don't say when it gets there they or how exactly it got there. Just say, oh, yeah, by the way. And they put on jerseys and all sorts of stuff. They keep it current. It's, it's almost like it's their own little um, uh, weekly show up there. And second, I did not opt for the vanity license plate. I instead went for the vanity ham call sign. Whiskey 7 Earth is Flat. W7EIF. Take it easy, brother. Charles. Yeah, nice. Nice. All right. This one's called Flat Earth Plate. Goes along with the Flat Earth license plate. Planet Earth is Flat. For the. Uh, by the way, I love Clue 13. Keep up the good work. That's from Mike. And the plate. Let me look at it real quick. It's going to take a minute to load because it's six megs. I'm trying to remember which one this was. Taking its time. Uh, it's called P yeah, it's from Michigan and you guys will probably see it in some of the slideshows soon, which is P E B flat. Yep. Original. I'll give him that. This one's called thanks, Mark. Mark, I just viewed your video Q and a from June 3rd and I couldn't believe it. You actually read one of my emails. And since I did not hear any negative comment, I expect I did not offend or aggravate you anyway. Thank you for the reason why I do is because I have invested thousands of hours learning about FE and other deceptions. And it's an, it's important for you to recognize that it not only for me, but all your viewers that are actually, I still want to break out into a Russian accent to, it's saying this, but it's from Albert. So its he's not Russian. Uh, taking you so seriously that they are putting aside other priorities in their lives to be part of this movement. I should add, I have sent you more emails with other ideas, all of them for the only purpose that if you find any of them useful or different, you can use them in the cause. Today, I have a simple yes or no question for you, and you can reply directly to this email because if it is not too much trouble. I know I have seen the moon in the daytime in many occasions. Considering the model of the FE I have watched in your channel with the moon hovering above the earth. If the moon have, have <laughs> reached enough height over the horizon, then we should be able to see it in theory. View the moon at any time from all or opposite sides of the plane. Simul yeah, this is just like the other guy. Simultaneously, considering we don't have anything that obstructs our angle and line of sight. Depending on your answer, I have some suggestions for your experiments. Thank you. P.S. No, I don't want to create my own channel or make videos since I am not scientifically inclined, but I trust that you can channel everything properly. Yeah, um, I would refer... Your email kind of back to the other one, which is you're assuming that it's exactly the same moon and there's only one moon, which we can't guarantee. I, I suspect it, but we can't guarantee it. And with that in mind, that, that experiment is going to have to be modified. This one's called just FE. Mark, I've watched videos on gyros. What about camera gimbals? Would they act the same? I, I would assume so because a gimbal is a gimbal. So why wouldn't it? That's from Donald. This one's called Four More Zane Flat Earth Songs for your playlist. Thank you, Zane. I, I know you're a songwriting fiend, and I have included so many on your stuff. Hopefully, I got these ones. Uh, Hi, Mark Zane. Flat Earth cover music never stops. Refitting familiar melodies to Flat Earth. Zane music is healing as it replaces existing neural pathways with truth and positivities. Uh, he did his first one, Stone, Te Stone Temple Pilots, uh, gets back together and to jam out Interstate Flat Song. Hold on to your hat while we introduce Ted Nugent's Flat Earth Fever. Kurt Cobain helped scream this one out with Nirvana's Smell Like Truth Spirit. And finally, Tool has decided decided to promote Flat Earth and showed up with a bang with their track, Lateral Lateralius. Wow, it's a tough one. And as always, a many thanks to you, Mark Sargent. That's from Zane. Thank you, Zane. It's good stuff. This one's called Two Questions. Mark, these are two questions I have had long before I got into Flat Earth. The first is, why do we never get to see uninterrupted video from launch pad to orbit because you can't you can't do it i rarely hear anyone talk about this you talk about it. I, I talk about it all the time shouldn't even the oblate spheroid heads question this 
Yes, they should. It's, in fact, it used to be, before I came up with the vacuum chamber test, it used to be my proof, which is, okay, you want to show me uh, that the Earth is a globe. Fine, put a 4K camera on the side of the, the, a capsule and when you're and let it, let that sucker run. And once you're done with it, and do not hit pause, do not hit stop, and we should have the unedited unedited footage and we never ever see that uh the second is planets through a telescope if we can see saturn through my telescope then why does jupiter look so small and saturn for that matter as well when i look at jupiter it should encompass my entire field of vision as i get closer but it does not why is that hmm hmm it's good I'm no astronomer, nor am I an astrophysicist, but I don't think I need to be. Just the basic concept of Geometry 101 should raise a red flag. What am I missing? And that's from Ragnar. So if anyone wants to address... The, the second one is kind of curious, though. When If you're zooming in on one of the large planets, why can't you zoom it in to where it fills up your entire screen? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe he's doing something different optically than other people. Not sure. This one's called Flat Earth Conference, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, August 2018, and that's less than a month away, and I will be attending along with a whole bunch of other people. This was, and why the title? I, I don't know. Good morning, Mark. I have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and my husband has four science degrees. Neither of us can convince the other of our theory, that our theory is a reality. I used to think Flat Earth believers were religious barbarians, but I recently bought tickets for my entire family to attend the FE conference in Edmonton, Alberta. I believe the philosophy of the Flat Earth theory alone is worthy of contemplation. My question is, do you know at this time how many people will be attending the Edmonton conference? I do not. Uh, and if there will be any master degree holding scientists, pilots, Navy personnel, or other credible sources will be able to give my husband a more educated debate than I am able to provide. I do not know. Would you consider advertising this conference to get more people interested? I, you, I, hopefully she looks at my channel. I, I have advertised this conference several times. And in fact, I'm going to do another promo, I believe on Monday. It. As I have not heard it advertised more than once, it'll be interesting to see if there are other flat earthers from Alberta. Will you be attending the conference? Again, the fact that you don't know that I'm speaking at this conference, uh, did you actually go to the website? I'm not picking on you, Grace. I'm just saying. Uh, I hope to meet you there. Thank you, Mark. Sincerely, Grace, registered nurse. And yes, I did. I did write back to her and I told her all those things. This one's called Our Beautiful Round Earth. Ooh, it's a troll email. I'm so happy. Mark, please take a trip in a high altitude balloon and just look out the side and you will see the curvature. That's from Samuel. I will not say his last name, even though I want to. At least he wasn't rude. Although he did capitalize the word round. I do not get many of those. Very, very few. This one's called The Flat Earth. Good evening to you, Mark. My name is Anton, and I'm from Leeds in England, <laughs> United Kingdom. Yes, I, I know where England is. Uh, I stumbled across the Flat Earth videos as I've been researching the 9-11 scenarios. After months of research, I am now utterly convinced of the flat plane we live on. A couple of questions arise, though. One, I am considering trying to educate and spread the word in my local area to start with, and I wondered if you had any advice. Two, I am a single father with two little girls, ages seven and six, and they are already in the midst of indoctrination. My youngest was telling me about the moon landings the other day, and my eldest already thinks the globe is correct. It is difficult to explain to young children, as they will then ask their teachers who confirm the lies. Is there any precedent with regard to people, families being able to distance themselves at school from the teaching? I have a lot more to ask, but I'm just trying to make contact at first. I hope you to hear from you soon. Very kind regards, Anton Joyce. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Other than homeschooling, you're not going to be able to immunize them entirely from what they are taught in school. I mean, that is the whole point of school is to indoctrinate uh, the kids and kind of make them fit in with society. Uh, so just just drop hints at home as best you can. Uh, not, not saying to cram it down their throats. So just plant the seeds. That's all you can do, like with anybody. In fact, kids are easier to plant se seeds in because of what the, the u.gov the, the, the British survey of American citizens that was, what about pushing between eight and 9,000 people? 
And they said that a lot of the, the younger people from 18 to 24, because they really couldn't ask anyone younger than that, uh, were already on board with this. Uh, in fact, a third of them were on board with the flat earth. And this really, really concerned scientists. So don't worry, just plant the seeds and, and you'll be fine. This one's called... Um, that is... Nope, sorry, can't read that one. This one's called Flat Earth Clues. Mark, awesome stuff. It cuts through the cognitive dissonance. Dissonance. I keep wanting to say dissonance. In my brain saying no. No, Flat Earth makes sense. We live in a hologram of many rooms. That's almost biblical. Pick and choose wisely or do it all over again. Thanks for your videos. I appreciate the time and research you put into them. Regards, Scott. Very welcome, Scott. This one's called Flat Earth Experiment. Mark, hello. Please review my experiment, and I would appreciate your two cents if you have a moment. Thanks, Manuel. Manuel. And I'm going to click on the experiment, and he put it on YouTube, and it's called, if you guys want to look it up, it's called The Last Experiment, Globe or Flat Earth. This is the most definitive experience we can carry out to prove that the Earth is flat. You know what? I'm going to give him a thumbs up. The Last Experiment, Globe or Flat Earth. It's The channel's called Mr. MH, published on June 4th. So, thank you for that. And... This next one's called Flat. Oh, good Lord, this thing's way too big. Way, way, way too big. Uh, but I, I will say that it's called Flat may not be the best description. It's from someone called M-A-N-N-A-M-A-S-T-E. And I can't really get into it too much. It's, it's just too big. But thank you for sending it. This one's called... Moon slowing us down to a 25-hour day. SpaceX is delaying the moon round trip indefinitely. That's from MSN. Mark, check out this post on MSN today. Two laughable nuggets of information. The moon's gravity should be slowing our rotational speed down, and eventually we will have a 25-hour day. For once, this media posting about space actually makes sense with the helioglobe model. It's like they are looking ahead and figuring out what the globe debunking arguments we might have and beating us to the punch with unprovable claims. I wonder if any math can prove that it should be slowing our rotation down at a faster, more measurable pace than they are claiming. Hey, look at the bright side. As the 24-hour experience day gets longer, at least the sidereal year will make sense at 24 hours a day instead of the minus 11 minutes BS. Uh, SpaceX just delayed their launch and around the moon trip indefinitely. Only two people supposedly signed up with down payments. Can't wait to hear what simple words of insight Elon will give us as an excuse to kick the can further down the road. I guess coming up with a good faking it plan is taking longer than expected or the C CGI isn't complete yet. And that's from Mark Ko Kozak. And yeah, in fact, I'm going to, uh, DITRH sent me an article this morning, which I'm going to read right after this. I'm going to do a separate video. The New York Post just slammed Elon Musk. He, the, the submarine thing he did with the, the kid rescue was too far, where he was, uh, he was, he was, he was insulting the people that w didn't take his submarine. And the New York Post was, was basically calling him out on every claim he's ever done. Everything he has talked about, he's he's blown. He's he's it's not even close. He said, "Oh yeah, I'm going to solve Puerto Rico's problem, power problems after the hurricane, with my solar panels. I'm we're going to send two people around the moon in 2018. Oh, it's, it's July 2018. No one's no one's going anywhere. That was two tourists. We're going to colonize Mars starting in 2020. Uh, I'm going to create a super train." that's going to go from Los Angeles to San Francisco. I'm going to create a super plane that's going to go from the United States to China in two and a half hours, and it's going to cost less than a first-class ticket, and so on and so on. And then uh, this last one really pissed people off because people died during this operation where those kids got lost in the cave. You know, the, if, you, if you've been living in Iraq, these kids, uh, this, a lot of kids in the soccer team went to deep into this cave, and the rains fell and flooded a section so they couldn't get back. And they had to, it took a lot of money and a lot of time. And, and one of the rescuers died trying to get these kids out. And Elon was, was insulting the, he, he, want, he said, Oh, I can solve this. I'll just send a mini submarine over there. 
And of course it didn't happen. And the kids got out literally within like two days after he even released that headline and he was insulting the, some of the rescuers. And it's just, I don't know why. I mean, I have my suspicions why they put him in front of a camera, but if you're going to do that, I mean, at least get somebody that the, the colors within the lines, all his claims are just awful, terrible. But anyway, check out the video I'm going to make on it. It, it should be pretty good. Uh, not me. I'm just reading the New York Post article, but I, I had a chance to peruse it this morning and it was brutal. They basically just called him a fraud, literally in the headline. All right, moving on. This one's called, <clears throat> hi, <laughs> Mark, please send survival guide. And that's from Master Chief. Happy to do it. And I did. This one's called, what's the call in number for strange world? Oh, wow. I, I shouldn't do a, a, a guy redneck accent because it was from Lisa Kay in Orlando, Florida. And I emailed her back and I said, the call in number is this. And in fact, this is the number 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. And you can just go to TFR. It's literally right on their website. Here's the call in number right there. This one's called NASCAR. Talking Flat Earth, Mark, not sure if anyone has mirrored this from NASCAR's legit channel. Their talk show discusses Mad Mike's launch. It's becoming a more widespread topic. Later, Mark. That's from Virgil. Yep, absolutely right. And another one from Virgil. As, oh, he forgot to send the link. Here's the said link to the NASCAR show. Yeah, it, just about everybody. The the Mad Mike thing generated. I'm sorry he doesn't like us, and I'm sure I'm sorry that he says that we should be giving him more credit. And no, I'm not going to apologize to him. He's like demanding an apology because I I insulted him in some ways. Like, look, you haven't launched. You, you went two times out there and and generated a lot of hype, but you didn't launch. Only on the third time did you launch. I I I understand the theater that you were going through. Uh, come on. Launch the launch, and I know why you you launched the rocket in the end is because you had too much pressure to to launch. You had a documentary team f following you around, and that movie does not get made until you launch the rocket. Appreciate the ex extra attention you gave us, but, but come on, you came to us and asked for the money for the rocket. So that and expecting us not to take a few shots at you when you delayed twice, uh, you're kidding yourself. Put 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 yourself in our shoes, and then see if you would still make those comments this one's called when life gives you lemons uh hi mark i think i have a way to make the most of your many trolls uh, again i don't get many trolls in emails or phone calls i only get them in the comment section and that's there's no way to avoid that it's youtube the, the the internet forums as long as you can remain anonymous are toxic they're lethal um to use them for something positive, here's how it works. Every time you upload a video, a 25-spot betting pool is created and populated by the first 25 trolls to occupy the comment section. Each box has a troll's name and his asinine comment. Your subscribers will then have the opportunity to buy into the pool using gift certificates for Reese's Peanut Butter Cups in lieu of money. <laughs> what? <laughs> I give you points for originality. Uh, we will have numerous winning criteria submitted by your subs that can be drawn from a hat at the predetermined time. Draws continue until someone wins. Let's walk through it. The first draw from the hat says, First troll to cite flush toilet water rotation as proof of the globe. The players check their squares for that phrase within their troll's comment. If nobody can match the statement, then another slip is drawn from the hat. That one might say, first troll to modify the noun moron with any of the following adjectives. Pathetic, deluded, misguided, misinformed, etc. You get the idea. It's like bingo, uh, but with flat earth. There are endless potential winning phrases or themes. First troll to say bullocks. Uh, first troll to pull Aristoth... Aristoth... Wow. Aristosthenes... Jeez, I hate that name. Out of his ass uh, in a comment and on and on. Way more fun than a Mr. Potato Head plus it's educational and, <clears throat> dare I say, nutritious. <laughs> Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Uh, I love them, but I don't think, I didn't, don't think any uh, person would say they're nutritious. Each winner and the name of the troll who, who contributed the root comment are announced during Strange World Mailbag. We always want to give the troll credit to encourage him to return to the comment sections. What do you think? Kindest regards as always, Lane M. Lane, love the idea. 
really, really do. But I don't want to give the trolls any more attention that I already than I already do, and I give them the bare minimum. If they write me a clever enough email, I will read it on this. If they bother to call in, remember most trolls. I think I've gotten what maybe five troll phone calls in 150 something strange world episodes five I, I i'm guessing five because you just you just don't get them any they're just mostly because they'd have to spoof a phone, a phone number and they don't want to do it they don't even want to get a burner phone so anyway this one's called first man it's a movie 2018 imdb mark see this film planned for this year was taking on my show last night sorry talking on my show last night about flat earth clue number one want to bet there's no specific moon footage they show thoughts and that's from paul in the plane absolutely yeah it, they had to do something because remember the 50th anniversary of apollo 11 is uh next year so we're you know we're the clue one from flat earth clue is the empty theater talks about how there's no moon movies the the only ones we got was an astronaut recruiting film which was the right stuff in 1983 and then in 1996 five i can't remember was apollo 13 and there weren't any moon movies and now they're going to do the life of neil armstrong played by ryan gosling and they're going to be trying to do some moon shots and it's going to be interesting. I don't know how much hype it's going to get, but it plays right into my stuff, which is, okay, here we go, 50-something 50, 50 years, and now, now you're going to release a moon movie with the best CGI you possibly have. Let's see how you do with that. Let me know. Let me know how that goes. I am definitely not going to see that in the theater. This one's called Flatter Thought. Hi, Mark. I used to really enjoy watching Ancient Aliens, but now I can't stand it. Thanks a lot. Honestly, I really appreciate all you have done and your insights about Flat Earth. I did have a thought I wanted to share. I haven't heard anyone in Flat Earth talk about this. Maybe I missed it. If the Earth is a ball and water is transparent, then as you see a sunset while looking at the ocean, shouldn't we see the sun through the water? I know it's a lot of water, but shouldn't there be at least some glow in the water where the sun goes down, even just a little bit? I used to live in Southern California and there is nothing. It's like the water is a solid barrier or the sun really doesn't go behind it. I'm really interested in your thoughts on that idea. Also, I'm wondering if any of your listeners would like to partner with me on a unique flat earth product that I have developed over the past year. I have three little kids and work full time and I haven't had the time to get it out there. If so, please have them contact me at bz3rm at hotmail.com thanks for everything mark and that's from rhett oh i'm sorry i answered to your your son question just go to ditrh the the youtube channel ditrh short for deep inside the rabbit hole and look at his son videos and if that isn't enough go to zeteticism.com and that's run by jeffrey grupp and he's got some wonderful son videos as well between the two of them you'll get all the sun flat earth goodness that you need all right, moving on. Let's go to this one called Science Proves Earth is Flat, Terra Convexa. Yep, we know this one. Hi, Mark. My name is Randy. I just watched a YouTube video called Science Proves Earth is Flat, Terra Con Convex, posted by Mike Helmick. The scientists uh, uh, performed numerous tests with high powered scopes, lasers, and building measurements. They found no curvature. It's a great video if you've not already seen it. And thank you for all the work you do in trying to wake people up. Keep up the good work. And that's from Randy. Yep. Yep. That's the South American team. It's okay. I mean, the, the it's it's laid out well enough. I mean, the production value is, is solid. It looks like they did a lot of work. However, it's not exactly the most honest thing in the world. First off, they said they've been doing this for the last seven years. Really? Where have you been? Because three years ago, we didn't even know you existed. So what, what happened? The second thing was they kind of tried to intermix stuff about aliens into it, kind of like an ancient aliens, where they were talking to an uh, alien in, in the bushes that had a high squeaky voice uh, that spoke in Portuguese and his name was Bibu, Bilbo, Bilbo, whatever, something. I think it was Bibu. This one's called Cookie Video. Mark, the lady from Hawaii, uh, has called you the last two weeks about the cookie video. She has looked at her YouTube history. Has she looked at her YouTube history to find it? 
if she actually watched it and she has it in her history turned on, she can scroll through her entire YouTube history and hopefully find it. Just a thought. Hope that helps her, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer, for that tech support tip. And you know what? I should have remembered that one. However, I kind of put that out of my head because I delete my history at all times. And I probably shouldn't do that either, but I have my reasons. This one's called Flat Earth Florida. Hello, Mark. My name is Kevin. I live in Florida. I jumped on the FE bandwagon a few years ago. A quick breakdown of my background. I work at the Kennedy Space Center, and I have been there for almost 30 years now, and my dad was there in the 1960s and 70s for the Apollo missions. I always wondered when they shot these rockets up why they would turn and start looking like they were going horizontal to the ground rather than going straight up into deep space. But we were always told they had to do that to use the Earth's gravity to slingshot out of low Earth orbit. I never really believed all the so-called science and numbers they throw at everything like billions of light years and the computers and the Saturn rockets were like old Texas Instruments calculators. I'm sure they were, but what group, even if they could go to the moon, would risk lives in using such low-end technology? I really enjoy your videos and look forward to catching all the new stuff coming up. By the way, I am an eight. it's an eight-mile trip from the high bay to the VAB, and when the rockets on the mobile launcher, I don't think they have to adjust for the curvature of the Earth while the rocket was being transported from there to Pad B. Also, I have I have to cross a bridge going over the Indian River to Kansas City each day that allows me a straight view, approximately six to eight miles, looking north and south. And I can guarantee there is no visible droppage there either, looking north and south. I just bought the flat Earth map that states the Earth as it is, written on it. And I'm going to proudly frame it and hang it up in the house to spark up conversation. Anyhow, just want to send a line to say hi for you to keep up the good work and look forward uh, to hear more good info in the coming months. Regards, Kevin. Yep. Good stuff, Kevin. Thank you for that. Do we have time for a couple more? Yeah, we do. Amazing how an hour flies by. And yet, I, I think I am making a dent, though, in my emails. Uh, this one's called Slideshow Art, and a big thank you to Flat Club. Shh. <laughs> Winky face. It's funny. Hello, Mark. My name is Brad Heim, and I am a newly awoken sheep. Since I have found your Flat Earth Clues videos, not only have I begun to ask more questions about what we take for granted, but it's also influenced my artwork. I heard you mention that you take admissions for your YouTube slides, and I've decided to email this small collection. Each one uh, has an original and duplicate and have been digitally edited. I personally like both and will leave it to you to decide which, if any, you would consider putting up. There's a lot of hidden imagery that hopefully hits people subliminally. Fighting fire with fighters, fire citing the constant barrage of subliminal globe reinforcement. If you honestly enjoy any of these, please let me know because my work will continue to consist of what I consider to be the most important thing in my world after my family and my friends. Thank you and the rest of the community. Sincerely, B. Heim. And uh, yeah, he's got some cool pictures here. I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to look at these. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Thanks, man. All right. This one's called something for your slideshows. Uh, and this is a, yeah, it's a, yeah, hopefully, I, yeah, I include this. The, the guy made a, a flat earth character uh, in Warcraft. It's a Tauren and it's called flat earth. F L A T U R T H. Because yes, because I grew up a gamer, I still do game from games from time to time, and I have never gotten rid of my Warcraft character. And my uh, guild on Warcraft is literally called Flat Earth. So I'm 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 representing every chance I get. <clears throat> Not only am I representing in Warcraft, but when I drive my car, I've got a Flat Earth license plate that says it's flat. Sorry, <clears throat> I had to take a drink of lemonade. All right. Oh, and he's a, um, you can look it up. He's uh, called one, he's a 110 level character. The expansion is coming out soon. It's an enhancement shaman on the area 52 server. And I'm pretty sure I used one of his pictures in my slideshow. Thank you very, very much for that. <clears throat> That's from Darren. This one's called prepper guide. Mark, I would like your prepper guide. Thank you, Eric. And that's from Eric Lanier. And I sent him one of those. Do we have time for one more? Uh, I think we do. You know what? Let's let's end. Wait, do we end on this one? 
Yeah, let's end on this one. This one sounds like a good one. Uh, called Send Mark Sargent to Antarctica. Hi, Mark. This is Jeremy Browning from Mississippi. I had a random idea that I'd like to get your thoughts thoughts on. We all know that the 24-hour sun has been well documented around the North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere, but I haven't seen any convincing evidence of the 24-hour sun in Antarctica. Okay, here's my idea. What if we crowdfunded a trip for a trusted FE investigator, you, to attempt to find definitive proof of the 24-hour sun in Antarctica? I'm sure that you could see where I'm going with this. If there isn't a 24-hour sun in Antarctica, then that is definitive proof that the world is not a globe. I thought of this because I know you have said that in the past you were willing to travel as long as we pay your way. So if we pay your end and your way to Antarctica, would you go? This would be the ultimate nail in the coffin for the globe model. Thanks uh, in advance. Looking forward to hearing your response. And it's from Yankee 1985. Uh, yes, I of course. If anyone wants to send me to Antarctica, and I'm pretty sure there'll be documentary teams in the future or some sort of production team that'll send me somewhere, because. Like they already have. They took me to California to, to do the salt and, salt and sea test. Of course, I'll go to Antarctica. But do I think it'd be the ultimate nail in the coffin? No, I do not. And that is because we can't prove when it gets out to Antarctica, what, again, what the sun actually is out there. If it's instanced, if it's some sort of projection, if there's multiples, if we're talking about the Book of Enoch and, and portals and, and multiple... Uh, light sources we just don't know so yeah of course i'll go out there and do my best to represent flat earth like i always do but do i think it's the ultimate nail in the coffin no no which is why i came up with something much much more simple which was the vacuum test again if you guys haven't heard this by already look up the um the flat earth clue called the lost nail which i did and that is the vacuum uh the power of a vacuum cannot work Wow, I'm completely butchering this. An astronaut suit cannot work in a vacuum. It can't because an astronaut suit is just a big bag of fabric, uh, and compressed air, uh, and no different than a balloon. So how are people walking around in a, in a vacuum, uh, whether it be a vacuum chamber or the vacuum of space? That suit would, would expand, it would get as tight as a drum, and you wouldn't be able to move your arms, your legs, your feet. You wouldn't be able to do anything. Your fingers would not be able to work. You would basically be a parade float. So that's my test, and we can do it here on the ground. Just get me, and all of the suits have worked perfectly. Nobody ha has died. None of those suits have been compromised from the 60s up until now. And if you think for one second that a suit in 2018 with microprocessor technology and just a backpack full of magical things that can stop the vacuum of space, maybe I'll give that to you. Maybe in 2018. Tell me how they did in 1968. Tell me how they did it. With, with no digital technology at all and no astronaut ever even talking about it in their recordings. Oh yeah, you know, my ears are feeling a little funny or a uh, suit, uh, you know, my oxygen levels. It, it should have been on their minds at all times. It should have been like a diving bell. Uh, look that up. I know it kind of dates me. Anyway, that's it. That's all we're going to do for the show. Uh, thank you for everybody that wrote in. Uh, again, you can send your emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Don't forget to miss the uh, New York Times thing or the New York Post thing I'm going to read here in a, a minute. Until then, guys, stay flat.